Hey guys, Mark Frosch, ProTech Dog Training in Simba. And I was um, talking about um, patterns of twos and threes. And I've said this before, some of you guys have been long time watchers of my videos, have done, seen me do a video on just that topic of patterns of twos and threes. Patterns and twos and threes are all about setting a pattern set of whatever behavior you're working on, moving to another one, moving to another one. That's three sets in itself, right? Three different type of patterns that are all trying to convey different things to the dog. That's a pattern set of three, right? Twos and threes. I call it the power of twos and threes, right? So it even gets deeper than that though. Those are three patterns, but I've also got the individual pattern set that I'm working on. I do that in a pattern of twos and threes. Then I move to the next one. Then I move to the next one, right? And I usually have about three pattern sets that I'm working on at any one time. And how you mix that up, how you jumble it up is important because it's about the dog learning, okay? And when you do it right, you do one thing for about a, a patterns of twos and threes, then you move to the next one. And when, how you mix that up is all about which one is he, uh, that he knows already, one pattern set that he's already knows, right? Another pattern set that he may just be learning, and the third one maybe that he doesn't know at all and you just start adding into that, right? And I look at it kind of a triangle. Uh, and, I've, and I had that out on a board. Nope, good, yes, good. So when you watch me work, watch to see my pattern sets and how I'm mixing up powers of twos and threes and how that works within the training. So the dog is learning to learn and he grows. I call it growing the dog. You've heard me say that a lot of times too. It's all about growing the dog at any one time. Nope, yes. Now this is Simba and Simba has a big problem. He's very high energy outflow, almost ADHD almost hyperactive to the point of over over the top. And that's a lot of wasted drive. You heard me talking about it in my other video, right? So the goal is to try to get pattern sets that you got the dog learning to learn, but we also deal with his maturity. He's a young dog, he's about five and a half months of age with all this energy and his brain is all over the place. He has very distinct drives. Anything I have that has any movement, anything that goes that he wants to go after, he's gonna latch on to it and, and that's, a double-edged sword, it's a good thing, but now you have all this stuff that's just bubbling out of that volcano to a point where it's something you've got to manage. And all you can do is manage it the right way so that the dog matures into it. I can't take the dog and just yank his head off constantly without ruining the dog, right? Good, so at this maturity stage, I've just got to wait for him to mature into it. But the big answer is really emphasize impulse control with everything I do. So you'll start to see me doing a lot of things that are about the dog's name preparatory to a command, which means waiting. I'm now taking him out of the kennel in the morning. He sleeps in the, in the house with me in a crate and I'm taking him out and right away I'm making him sit in front of me. I'm putting his little pinch collar on and I'm doing a lot of impulse control all the way out the door. He's got to wait for that door to open up. He's got to wait for me to say his word. Yep. Everything's about waiting right? With little pauses, that pause, that pause set so important, right? So it's dog's name, pause, and then an explosion, dog's name, pause, and then uh, uh, action word, okay? So you'll see me doing that today and watch for seeing the pattern sets that I'm working on and how I do things in, in patterns of twos and threes, okay? All right, good boy, good. All right, so I'm just going to work him and see how it goes. Good boy, Simba. Good, Simba. Oh, yeah. Good. There's one pattern set. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. Good. Good boy, Simba. Good. Simba. Nope. Yeah. 
my second pattern set. First one was the healing. Good. Good. I'm down and I'm working on, right? Good. There was that pause, teaching him to wait. Everything's about that pause. We're going to be doing a lot of that because this is what's going to give him the impulse control. Good. Good. Well, stop knocking it off the table, stupid. Good. There's a time loader. Good. And that little pause that goes into something's going to happen. He's learning to wait for it. Good. This right here is the most important thing for Simba right now. With a lot of work on a lot of little areas, just kernels and kernels and kernels of things that denote impulse control. With everything he does. Simba. Yep. Good boy. I noticed that nice little pause. That's what I'm talking about. The impulse control. Waiting, right? Good. 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 Simba. Yep. Good boy. Good. There you go. Nice little pauses, right? All right. Now to my bowl. So there's three right there. It's almost the same thing we're working on last night. Yes. Good boy. Good. Yes. Good boy. Good. What I'm trying to catch is denoting to him for the look game that he's looking at me with his hands going to my face and then reward. Both hands, right and lefts. Balance, right? Good boy, good. Nope. Yes, good boy, good. Nope. Good boy, good. You're getting it. We're going to get it. Boy. Nope. Good, good, good. Yes, good boy. Right there, I used the good duration marker. He was looking at me. I said good. Caught his attention by saying good. He stayed with me and then right away into an explosion. Right? Very minute. But this is a the look game is one of the, the really kind of a critical stage because you're teaching him not to follow the hands as much. He starts to learn the good duration marker off of it. And then everything's tied into that explosion release where he's waiting, right? Good. Good, good, good. Yes, good boy. And the good marker right away was catching his attention and he was looking at me and then right in the explosion. So I've got something that I can convey the thought to him of what I'm after with a little better. No. Good, good. Yes, good boy. And so now I catch that and I know that it's working. Good, good. Good. Yes, good boy, good. So I start using it, right? A lot of times you gotta feel, feel around it, around the edges of what you're trying to convey to the dog to catch it, but the rules are the same. We're trying to get him not to follow the hands out here. And so we, I use the duration marker, he's just starting to, to learn it, and he right away looked at my face when I was saying good, so there it is. Now I've got, I know I, that'll start to work. Now I can convey the total concept to him to, to look at my face and to understand the look at my eyes, right? Good boy. Good, good. Good, good. Yes, good boy. Notice I'm not moving my hands yet because he's such a, a flighty little boy, high energy outflow, that if I do, he's going to lose the concept of what I'm trying to teach him. I want to get that anchored first, and then I'll start challenging him with more. Good. Oh, yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. Good. Another pattern set. Good. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. You go through him. Place actually. Good place. Good. Good boy. But the body language was there, right? Good boy. Up. Place. I'm blowing purple quinky. Yes, I am. I'm blowing. Up. Place. Place. Good boy. Good. Place. Nope. Good. And then we're trying to tie in the rest of the things 
in relationship to when he does the right thing, he hears that click and here comes that reward, right? You got all kinds of little behaviors to start to build on now. Nope, nope. Good, good, good. There you go. As soon as you heard the good, you started doing it, right? Good, good. What does that tell you? That my good marker is starting to set in. Now, as I go along, if I do it right, I can keep using that good to teach him all kinds of things to get longevity and duration within whatever the behavior may be. That's why I say good, good a bunch of times. Because when I start the healing, I'm looking for that high head and I'm looking for other behaviors. I can start to ask him to do it. And because he understands the duration marker, I can get him to do it for longer. That's what the duration marker is all about, is longevity in the behavior. Good. Hey, no, good. And I'm going to break in the play toy because I've corrected him twice already because of it. Nope, nope. Look at him. He watches my hands with everything. He sees me going to my pouch for those toys. And toys is what he wants for two reasons. One, the dog's a driving mother blank. And two, because his owners have been doing nothing but that since he's been a puppy because they've gotten into this wanting the dog to bite, okay, and go after things. And they thought that that was the right thing to do. You don't have to work that hard, guys. You don't when you've got a dog with a drives. Wait for it to come to you. Be patient. And don't accent it so much that you create a nut. And that's exactly what you'll get. And now I've got to try to balance this out and get him away from it a little bit and keep him settled down because they've ramped him up so much with his play stuff that the dog's head's way out to lunch. Now, some of this is genetic, don't get me wrong, but it's also because the owner shouldn't have been doing all this friggin' play stuff trying to dissipate energy because everybody's so into, let's burn off the energy and that'll slow down the dog, the Caesar Milan aspect of things, right? Caesar's totally correct in a lot of ways, but you can also create behavior sets that get in the dog's head. And with this dog's genetics, you didn't have to do that. Stay away from it a little bit. Don't create a monster. Don't create a nut. And that's what you do when you do that sort of thing. There's so many mixed messages out there. It's not even funny. And as soon as somebody hears it, they think that's the answer. Let's go ahead and expand all this energy and try to tire him out to get rid of the dog's energy. And that'll make him settle down. No, all you're doing is creating a behavior set. The dog goes way up to the moon. He doesn't know how to settle down because you haven't taught him to. You taught him to ramp up the whole time. And the other thing with Malinois and Dutch Shepherds, do you realize that their refresh rate, of, you know, basically in, in the breed is about 30 minutes? I can go out and take my Dutch Shepherd and work the hell out of him. He'll be tired out, look like he's going to die, lay down, and 30 minutes later, he's ready to go again. You see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying to you is don't create a monster by doing the behavior so much when they're young and thinking that that's the way to settle a dog down. It's, it's not. It's a way to get the dog to be a total fruitcake and a nut. And now I've got to work real hard to try to get this dog to stop being a nut, right? Look at him. That's all he's thinking about is what I've got in my pouch. Double-edged sword, as I've said before. It's a good thing. It gives me something to work with, but it's also a pain in the ass. Good. But we'll keep working on our... No. On what we've been working on. I see. Good. Nope. Come here. Good. I see. Good, good, Simba. Good, Simba. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Notice the pause. Dog's name, pause, wait, then it's coming. He's going to start learning and he'll tie it together with what we're working on. Out. Yes, good boy. Good. On the dog. Good. Good boy, Simba. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. Simba, out. Out. Yes. Good boy. Good. Yes. Good boy, Simba. Good boy. Yeah. Good boy. Simba. Out. Good. Good. I see. I see. Good. Simba. Good. Nope. Good. Yeah, that's what we're going to impulse control, Simba. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Red. Quiet. No. I'm going to have to start moving my camera set to the other side of the property so I don't have to deal with all the noise when I start playing. The dogs get ramped up. All right, good boy, out. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Good boy, Simba, good boy, good. Simba, out. Yes, good boy, yes, good boy, yes, good boy, good. As soon as he dropped it, I come alive. 
I'm dead until then, right? Good. Pray dies. Simba, out. Yes. Yes. Good boy. That's no longer any fun. The fun's all with me, right? Good boy. Good. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. We created a non-conflict. If I try to fight this dog for this ball, he's going to constantly be fighting me. That's what they call conflict because it goes against his natural instincts. When the prey's alive, he wants to fight. He wants this game. As soon as it dies, yes, good boy, good. He comes back up for the one that's gonna have the fun, right? Good. And every now and then, I mix it in with wanting some kind of control. Simba, good, good. I see, good, good, there you go, good. Nope, good, good, little impulse control. Simba, get it, get it, get it, get it. Pause, waiting will be a big part of his life from now on.